When we use the internet, whether it be for online shopping or to communicate with our friends, we often hand over a great deal of personal information, such as our names, physical address, phone number and bank details. One way of keeping this data secure is by using computer encryption systems to encode the information. The purpose of this video is to explain how public key encryption works. However, in order to understand this concept, we must first explore symmetric cryptography. Imagine you have a box with a lock and a key that can unlock the box. Anything you wish to protect can be placed inside of that box and only those with a copy of the same key can unlock it. This is essentially how symmetric key encryption works. Both computers have access to the same key that can be used to encrypt and decrypt packets of information. The benefits of this system include secure algorithms and fast performance. However, symmetric cryptography does not offer a secure way of transferring the key to others. And as such, it is possible for third parties to hijack the message should they gain access to the key. In 1976, this problem was addressed and a solution was born called public key encryption. Under this system, there are two related keys, a public key that is accessible by all and a private key known only to the recipient. Unlike symmetric encryption, it does not require a secure channel for the exchange of each key, as it is virtually impossible for third parties to determine the key's algorithm. So for example, let's say that John wishes to send a private email to his work colleague Sarah. John would use the public key to encrypt the information and then send the message to Sarah over the internet. A third party who intervenes at this point might be able to retrieve the encrypted message and the public key. However, they will be unable to read the email in its encoded form as access to the private key is kept secure. Only Sarah can decrypt the message by using her private key. And in this way, security attacks are effectively minimized provided the recipient can be trusted. Alternatively, public key encryption can be used in reverse to authenticate a message. For instance, Sarah could use her private key to sign the email and John may use the matching public key to validate the signature. In this case, it is once again irrelevant that a third party might have access to the public key as it is simply being used to verify the sender. Now, because of the complexity of public key encryption, it is typically used only to transfer a symmetrical encryption key by which the message is encoded. As mentioned, this system is a lot faster and is therefore the strategy used by web browsers and web servers. Transport layer security, as it is more formally known, is the overall security protocol used to transmit sensitive information over websites such as Facebook, ASOS, eBay and much more. It incorporates public key cryptography and is designed to prevent third parties from tampering with communications. So how does it work? Fundamentally, once a request for access has been made to a secure page, the web server will send out what is called a digital certificate. This certificate is a unique piece of code that acts as a middleman for both computers. It is used to confirm the identity of each party before sending out the public key that can be used to encrypt a message. As mentioned, the message can only be decrypted using the recipient's private key and in this way companies which operate online are able to ensure the safety of their customers. In summary, public key encryption is being used widely across the internet and is essential in safeguarding our communications to one another. It is incredibly important as transmissions are routinely passed over networks controlled by third parties and consequently it plays a vital role in protecting users from third party attacks.